Hey, what's up? It's Lawrence from Precision Test Prep. In front of us, we're going to find the 13 uh, examples of subject verb agreement. I'll be able to show you these things while giving you some tips to help you through this, all right? So the number one thing I want you to remember is that every single sentence in the English language has to have a subject and, ver and verb pairing, okay? So what we're looking for here is subject to verb. All right, that's the be all end all, the most important part of this whole game, subject to verb. And if you can remember that, you can master subject verb agreement, master sentence structure, and then eventually master the SAT writing and language section. All right, so the order we're looking for here is subject to verb. There are some examples here that flip that, but most of the time, I'm talking about 99.9% .9 of the time, Subject to verb is the order that we want to go in. All right, so let's take a look at our example. All right, so the answer is no's. But I'm going to start out anyway by going through the motions, and you'll be playing along with me at home. Here we go. Who or what know or knows how to pitch a curveball? Neither player knows. And here's why. The word neither implies neither one knows. Anytime that you see one body or thing, that is a singular subject. Every time, never varies, okay? So keep that in mind. So neither player, not one player knows. Okay, you notice the order, okay? Let's do the next one. Who or what is or are eligible for promotion this year? Who is or are eligible for promotion? I want to go as far back to the beginning of my sentence as I can. So I go as far back and I see the word one. That's my subject. Now, why is it my subject? Well, one of the two teachers. So how many? One. And that's the focus of the entire sentence. One of the teachers. It could be one of anything. And that's why this information here doesn't matter. One is eligible. All right, so don't worry about that prepositional phrase that's in the middle of the subject and verb. It's just extra information, okay? What do we do with extra information? Cross it out. All right, let's take a look at number two. What is or are his favorite foods? Well, right away, I see a clue, and it's the word foods. So that means that the subject has to be plural. So uh, spaghetti and pizza, so there's definitely two things there, are. All right, now, there are some dishes like macaroni and cheese, peanut butter and jelly that are one thing, right? It sounds weird. It is one thing. Two things are one thing. Kind of sounds awkward. It happens sometimes um, when we're talking, but when we're doing this, right, we go back, evaluate, and move forward. All right, so let's go take a look at the next one. Who or what is or are to attend the seminar? Who or what is or are to attend the seminar? We go back, the senior judge, as well as, oh, but that's extra though. Why is it extra? Do you see how there's two commas? Anytime I see two commas, I can eliminate that. See, the senior judge is. What happens when you see these two commas, your voice needs to rise up into the comma, right? So it's up into a comma and then down and up and then down. Okay. So it's your subject up and then the extra information and then the verb. All right. And you'll see that many, many times, um, you know, in English and through these sentences. All right, let's go to the next one. There was or were a flat tire on the bike. That's an interesting one. It's flipped around. So what was or were there? There was a 
It's a flat tire. The flat tire was. Check it over. There was a flat tire. Makes sense. All right. Neither Max nor Clara use or uses ketchup on hamburgers or french fries. Who use or uses ketchup? When I see the word neither followed by nor, I have to go with the closer subject. That's my subject. Clara uses ketchup. All right, so that's the or rule. It's really simple. If you see or or nor, you have to choose the closer subject. All right, it's really that simple. Just choose, choose the closer subject. All right? All right, let's go to the next one. The team, including the coach, host or host the pep rally each spring. So who hosts or hosts the pep rally each spring? We have to go as far back to the beginning of the sentence as we can. The team, here we have extra information. The team is one thing. Team hosts the pep rally, all right? A lot of people get confused here with the S at the end of a verb. The S at the end of a verb is a singular verb. The S at the end of a noun is a plural noun. All right, so if you just read it back to yourself, you might have to read it out loud and listen. You'll hear um, the right way to say it because you don't make that mistake when you speak. But when you analyze it, you end up making that mistake. All right, so let's go to the next one. Violet, Mia, and Devin's team play or plays well under pressure. Who or what play or plays well under pressure? Notice how it's Violet, Mia, and Devin's team. So it's their team. But the focus is on the word team. So the team plays well under pressure. All right? Watch out for uh, groups of, of people that are possessing one thing. It's always the number that we're looking for. It's either singular or it's plural. That's it. All right, so let's go to number eight. We're almost done. My father, my mother and father enjoy or enjoys my drama performances. So who or what enjoy or enjoys my drama performances? My mother and father, that's two, enjoy. When you read it back, you'll see that it has to be enjoy if you're not paying attention you'll pick father and Joyce. Now this is where tests like the SAT and the ACT make it really, really tough. As well as te tests like um, Catholic school entrance exams and other uh, grammar tests. We're talking about professional test makers, okay? So these people, and yes, they are actually professional test makers. I know it sounds ridiculous, but they will take words and put them in different areas that make this very, very challenging. So. If I was making this test, I would, in the upper right-hand corner, put my mother and, and then I would drop father down to the next line, and then put the verb. And I would do that to trick students, so they, I'm testing them on their ability to look at the whole area. My advice is to bracket out the sentence. Literally put the bracket around the sentence so that you know exactly the whole thing uh, that, you're, that you're using and that you, you want everything, every part of it within that, that unit. Um, if you don't, you might run the risk of making mistakes. And every mistake on each of these tests is just, you know, so costly. All right, so that's why we do that. All right, so here we have the chocolates in the fridge taste or tastes delicious. What tastes or tastes delicious? Go back, the chocolates taste delicious. Remember, it doesn't matter where they are. They could be in the fridge. They could be on the table. They could be on the counter. They could be in the sky. They could be in your lunchbox. They could be on the floor. It might be gross. It could be in the garbage, but it's still going to taste great because it doesn't matter where they are, all right? So prepositional phrases like in the fridge, 
They don't matter. All right. The study on magnets is or are informative. So what is or are informative? The study is informative. It does not matter what the study is on. Get rid of it. All right? Almost done here. Who or what is or are comfortable? So neither of the couches is. Because what we're saying is neither one is. Remember, it doesn't matter if they're couches or chairs or desks or cars or whatever. It's just that that's extra information. Get rid of it. I'm sure you can see a pattern here with the subject on the left on almost every single one of them. All right. Mathematics is or are my favorite subject. So what is or are my favorite subject? That's one subject. Mathematics is one subject. Mathematics is my favorite subject. And the last one is who or what is or are in APM. The news, the news is one thing. I know it looks like it's more than one thing, but it is one thing. Um, the news is on at 8 p.m. All right, and again, you'll notice we have subject verb, subject verb, subject verb, all the way through. You want to make sure that you keep subject to verb every single time. That's the goal behind all of grammar. Occasionally, we tweak it, we move it around in different ways, but 99.9% .9 of the time, subject to verb is the order that we want. If you do it this way, in which you question the verb and then find the subject, uh, on tests, you'll have a much, much better chance of getting it right because you won't get tricked as readily. All right, so I hope that helped. Um, if you need anything, just reach out to me. My email is ptpenglishprep at gmail.com. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.